What's up, people? My name is Liam. Welcome to Millennial Model Mayhem, where it's your hobby, your way. Today's video is about a miniature painting challenge that I did in October and the importance of time management. The models I'm painting in this challenge are from the miniatures game War Machine and Hordes by Privateer Press. If you don't know what a miniatures game is, <laughs> don't worry, I'll explain later. First, I'm gonna explain the rules for the painting challenge, and then I'm gonna show you my scorn painting recipe. It's not that original. All right, let's get started then. Most miniatures games are centered around collecting and painting an army from a faction in the setting of that game, and War Machine and Hordes features 15 unique factions. It's also common in these games to use a points system for players to construct standardized lists to evenly match their opponent's forces. This challenge focuses on a smaller format of the game called Brawl Machine, and was organized by the War Machine Hordes painting group on Facebook. So, I gathered my unpainted Scorn models, then figured out my Brawl Machine list. As you can see, I have this problem where I start projects without finishing previous ones, therefore these minis are in various stages of being base coated and airbrushed. But I did check with the organizers to make sure I still had enough unpainted minis to qualify. The rules were to paint 31 points of models for the 31 days in October. Now, time for that painting recipe. First, I'm starting off with a nice relaxing coat of Vallejo Game Color Earth all over the base. And then we take some model color sand yellow and dry brush all those nice textures on the base. If you watched my Monster Energy Marine video, you'll know that I like to do this part first because it's a little messy and we don't want to get that sand yellow on any parts on the feet or legs that we've already painted. Then we're going to move on to P3 Thrall Flesh and start fleshing out the underside of this dinosaur, which is actually a kitbashed model. The original one from Privateer Press is riding a kind of saber tooth tiger type deal, but I saw someone else do this same kit bash online a number of years ago, and I thought it was too cool. So this is a Dark Elf Cold One mount from Warhammer Fantasy. Notice how in this stage I'm using multiple thin coats, and making sure to preserve the area near the dark green part so we can start working on that color transition. And continuing to work on that area, we're going to add some P3 Crix Bane base to the mix, as well as a little bit of glaze medium, and this is going to help create an even better transition between those light and dark areas. And then I'm following up with a dry brush of Game Color Sick Green, focusing on the highlight areas. And for a second highlight, simply mix in a little bit of Livery Green, just like with Kyle the Space Marine. Also, all the airbrushing previously done to this model was using all the same colors shown in this video. For the claws on the dinosaur, we're going with just a regular matte black because I want to create some contrast between those sharp claws and the skin. And to highlight it, we're going to go to P3 Coal Black. I love this color, I can't get enough, and this pot is almost empty. Then I use a little bit of P3 Sanguine Base for the inside of the mouth and tongue. Next, I'm using P3 Gun Corpse Brown for the saddle on the dinosaur, as well as the cloth sections of the infantry models. This is another section where it's important to put on multiple thin coats of paint, since we want the cloth to look nice and smooth. Then we're going back to the Army Painter Matte Black to paint the under armor on the infantry, as well as some sections on the shield for a bit of color separation, and the poles on the weapons. And for the skin tone, we're using P3 Idrian Flesh, which is technically for the Idrians from a different faction in War Machine and Hordes, but what can I say, I like to be unique. And now we're just finishing up some details on the raptor with some thrall flesh for the teeth. Then some game color gold yellow and a dot of black for the eyes. Now it's time to grab that P3 sanguine base and move on to some of the major areas on the rider and infantry models. Which includes areas like the armor, the flags on the back, parts of the shield, etc. 
To add some contrast to that red, we're gonna paint some of the decorative belts and ropes some meridius blue. Okay, time to grab the game color glorious gold for what will definitely be the most time consuming part of this project, and that is painting all the gold trim. I have a love-hate relationship with painting gold, because it's pretty time consuming, you gotta do it in multiple coats for it to look good, yet I always end up painting it, <laughs> and buying minis that just ask for a lot of gold. But at the end of the day, there's nothing more satisfying than a crispy gold trim. Once there's a nice foundation of gold, I grab my red game ink and start using it to block out sections of the armor for some nice color separation. And I also use it to help liven up the red sections of armor, just because it flows into the cracks and corners of the armor better and it's easier to control. Now using the Sanguine base with a mix of Scorn Red, we're going to start building up highlights on the larger sections of red armor, as well as the back flag. And like I was doing before with the skin on the dinosaur, I'm putting on multiple thin coats, and in this case I'm slowly mixing in more of the Scorn Red. And then for the final highlight on the back flag, we're mixing in just a little bit of Gold Yellow. And now moving on to game color gun metal, we're going to paint some of the decorative elements like this back paraphernalia, and a few pieces on the harness, as well as the weapons. Now using a mix of thrall flesh and game color dead white, we're going to highlight the shoulder horns, which I definitely forgot to record me base coating them thrall flesh, sorry. And then the ridges on the dinosaur also get highlighted with this mix. And holding my breath so I can paint the eyes some dead white, and a little dot of black. Now that the eyes are done, I can mix my Idrian and Thrall flesh and start highlighting parts on the hands and the face. And next, to make these boys even fancier, we're going back to our trustworthy Sick Green, and we're going to base coat some of the gemstones. But we're going to finish those up later, because next we're going to mix Gun Corpse Brown with Thrall flesh, and then give some highlights for the cloth bits. Like I did in my previous highlighting, I'm slowly going to mix in more and more of the Thrall flesh, and start building up that nice highlight. The following highlight will be P3 Arcane Blue, which will be for the sections we painted Meridius Blue before. With all the colors mostly blocked off now, we've got to go back to the Glorious Gold and start the Glorious Cleanup process. Once that's done, it's finally time for a nice relaxing stage, and by far my most favorite, where we just take good old Army Painter Strong Tone and just slather that sauce all over the minis. Of course, make sure it doesn't pool too much. Once that's dry, I go back to the Livery Green, as it's time to start finishing up the final details with those gemstones, putting it on in very light thin coats as we build up a nice shiny highlight. And then we're going to mix it with a bit of metal medium to just give it that extra little sparkle. The metal medium will also be used to mix with the gunmetal from before to highlight the weapons, as well as with highlighting the glorious gold. And I don't worry about highlighting every single detail and ridge, only the ones that I think are most prominent. And then the final detail is to grab that dead white and freehand paint some kanji onto the flag. Because I'm a weep. weep! Okay, and with that done, we just slap on some paint on the base, marking the arcs according to the rules of the game, of course. Put a wasteland tuft from the army painter on the base to give it a bit more realistic detail. And then put a nice matte top coat over everything to protect all my work. I would call this paint job that I do on my Scorn tabletop quality. It's a recipe I've been fine tuning for a few years. I find it strikes a good balance between bringing out the details on the Scorn armor while also cutting enough corners so that I don't go crazy painting a lot of gold trim, which is very important for a project like this. Alright, so we're finished the test model stage. It took about 15 hours, which was a bit longer than I had hoped, but you know, we gotta keep pushing forward, I'm committed. 
And uh, thankfully the next step is just some nice relaxing airbrushing, so let's get to that. Now the airbrushing we're doing here is pretty simple. I'm just taking the same sanguine base we used before to put a nice foundation layer on all the minis. And then we go back to our scorn red to get that main red color on there. We're not doing anything fancy here, just getting some nice smooth even colors down so it matches the ones that have already been painted. Alright, let's take another look at the list. And here's everything that still needs to be painted. Seems doable. Alright, so we've airbrushed a bunch of nice reds, and it's officially time to start doing the long slog, painting the remaining 18 models. So we're gonna try and start off small and do a batch of the five Karax. While I grind through painting the rest of these minis, allow me to further muse upon miniatures games. Obviously, there are many miniatures games out in the world other than War Machine and Hordes, the most popular being Age of Sigmar and Warhammer 40,000 from Games Workshop, and there is honestly a ton of different miniatures games out there with a wide range of settings, scales, minis, gameplay styles, you name it. And most miniatures games also usually have a pretty flushed out setting and lore that you can dive right into when you're getting into the game. This is what got me into War Machine and Hordes in the first place, because it has a really unique mix of steampunk and fantasy elements, all combined with some really neat art direction and well laid out books. For me, I absolutely love diving into the lore of a setting, and it's stuff like this that gets me interested in a game in the first place and motivates me to keep painting and collecting more minis. But if lore isn't your thing, that's okay too. There are multiple aspects to this hobby, and some people are in it more for the competitive gaming aspect. Me personally, I came for the gaming and stayed for the painting. But you can do it however you want, because it's your hobby, your way. What's up, it's your boy, and now we're gonna get started on the next stage, which is only gonna be three miniatures. But it's three extra fancy miniatures. We got two flag boys and then one fancy spear boy. So gonna put in like a little bit of extra effort into them just because the sculpts are a bit nicer. And it'll also be kind of a break because I'm only painting three miniatures instead of like five or eight. The first chunk of painting I did for the five Karax took me about eight hours, and because I was tracking my time fairly meticulously, I was able to figure out that I can get about three hours of productivity out of any given day. And with that valuable information, I was able to roughly plan out how long the rest of the project would take. And if I hadn't done that, then I don't think I would have been able to finish the challenge on time. So the three fancy flag boys took about eight hours to do in total, shows how much extra time I put into those details, and I was starting to run low on Army Painter's Strong Tone. Okay, good news everybody, I managed to procure another bottle of Army Painter's Strong Tone, because every model gets drenched in that, so we're definitely going to go through the current bottle we have. And yeah, I'm starting on the two remaining Ferox, just having a chill two dinosaur painting session before I move on to the final stretch and go insane. Throughout the entire process of this challenge, I put in a little bit of extra effort into my organization and planning for the whole thing, because I knew that if I didn't properly manage my time, this could quickly get out of hand and I did not want to be rushing to scramble at the very end to finish everything on time, especially when it came to painting all these minis with a lot of gold trim. Because I knew if I had to do a ton of gold trim all in one big long sitting, I would definitely get burnt out. Alright, so I finished painting the two remaining Ferox, and it took me about two hours, but uh, it felt like eight. <laughs> and I'm starting to feel sore in my elbows and wrists, 
uh, which I suppose is to be expected. I've never really painted this much in such a short time period before, but uh, that aspect is also satisfying in its own way. And believe it or not, I'm getting kind of tired of painting red and gold. I think one of the most useful pieces of information I took from this exercise was just knowing how important it is to know how long it takes you to do something. Thanks to the organization and planning I did beforehand, using the knowledge of how long it usually takes me to paint something was my main key to success in order to finish this challenge on time. And compared to some of the other miniature painting challenges that I've seen on YouTube, this one really wasn't even that hard. But you know what? I still feel like I made an accomplishment. And if you're hesitant to participate in something like this, don't be. Believe in yourself. Actually, believe in the me that believes in you. So, at the end of everything, the remaining swordsmen took about 13 hours. So that brings the project total to 47 hours and I did manage to finish on time. Also, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I did win in one of the categories. Now to wrap things up with the moment everyone's been waiting for, some glory shots. And here's my entire Scorn collection so far, for no reason. And my pile of unpainted minis looks far less intimidating. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, consider checking out my other videos. And if you're a return viewer, thank you very much for your continued support. I've got a lot more spicy content in the works, and I'm not leaving my house anytime soon, so I'll catch you next time. Take it away, Barbatos.